Hello and very warm welcome to the Arise interview, 60 minutes of multifaceted discussions where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things and we feature the voices at the heart of the stories. I am Christian Okodo. Thanks for joining us. Coming up in the next hour, the common dictum that health is wealth defines the well-being of a nation and its people. In Nigeria, nay Africa, there is still the prevalence of common diseases, though preventable, that still ravage the continent due to poor budgetary provisions by national government and general poverty and impoverishment of the populace. The per capita income of the average Nigerian, for example, or an African, is less than $2 per day occasioned by poverty and deprivation. That is why the World Health Organization is raising the alarm over the looming dangers in the health sector and the consequences between uh, now and the year 2030. A new report by the World Health Organization suggests that there will be urgent health challenges for the next decade. As such, they are urging world leaders to invest more resources in core health priorities and systems. In the report, Warnings were made known if world leaders fail to invest in uh, adequately uh, health priorities which will put lives, livelihoods and economies in jeopardy. Today, we'll assess the readiness of world leaders in investing in health priorities with Africa in focus. In a moment. Why is it that countries invest heavily in protecting their citizens from terrorist attacks, but not against the attack of a virus or some common diseases? Well, the World Health Organization says health is an investment for the future. It says not investing in health could be more deadly and damaging economically and socially. The World Health Body listed the threatening health challenges as access to medicine, climate crisis, conflict, inequality, infectious diseases, epidemics, and harmful products. WHO emphasizes that governments, communities, and international agencies must collaborate to achieve these critical goals. From on this story, I have now been joined by Zainab Sharif, who is the director in charge of the traditional, complementary, and alternative medicine department in the Federal Ministry of Health. She is a pharmacist and fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria and author of several books on traditional, complementary, and alternative medicine. We also have Dr. Ezeo K.K. Chika Odinaka as a senior medical officer in the Department of Internal Medicine, Wuse District Hospital, here in the Federal Capital Territory of Nigeria, Abuja. Ladies, very warm welcome. Thank you very it's much. so nice to be surrounded by ladies like this. And, you are uh, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> wish that was my name. <laughs> okay, to a very serious uh, business now, let me start with you, uh, Zainab. Yeah. This alarm by the World Health Organization, obviously it's not the first time, it's and right. it's so worried because of the SDG goals. Yes. The MDG goals, a lot of developing countries never met them, whether in the health or eradicating poverty, and the alarm is being sounded again. Another 10 years, the deterioration is going to be wider, it's going to be catastrophic. Great. WHO will always raise alarm because it has a mandate to talk, to air, to inform, to educate the world on health issues, be they preventive, curative, emergency health warnings. So that is very apt. Having said that, you have just clearly said it in your opening uh, teaser that uh, we observe that there are many uh, issues on health, especially in the issues of budgetary allocation. But you know that we are supposed to have 15% of the total budget to be allocated to health. But we are yet 
to meet this goal. We don't, don't even meet 2% yes, in Nigeria. Not even 2% because for obvious I'm going reasons, to reel out that statistics. For obvious but reasons. Yeah. For obvious reasons. No enough fund that can meet all the needs. We are bedeviled with so many things. But however, if we are able to prioritize in terms of health, you have clearly defined health as saying complete set of physical, mental. I would want to add social and spiritual well-being because that should be encompassing. If we're able to look at that critically, we may begin to focus more on preventive health care issues, which is very specific with the SDG goals. No poverty. I think that is goal one. And then the goal three, which talks about good health and well-being. So it's not just having the disease, preventing the disease. And of course, other factors too, uh, encompassing the health aspect. You talk of goal six, good water and good sanitation, isn't it? And even goal 13 talks about good production and consumption. And of course, the one of goal 13, talking about climate issues. All these affect health. And then we need to look at have we, how much have we done? What is the government doing? Coming from the Federal Ministry of Health and Good, what have we done? Yes, we can always do better. But we can do better if we are able to address the issues holistically, not in terms of compartments, because we know that health cannot be the sole responsibility of federal government. Every stakeholder is important, a private, everybody, individuals. If you keep your environment clean, you wash your hands, you are able to sweep your environment, I think you are preventing some diseases. Just to at least let me just say that for now. Okay, that's uh, a very good point. I don't know if uh, Dr. Ezio KK would agree that, yes, uh, um, Zenab had said that WHO is there to inform, raise the alarm, they will always raise the alarm. Yeah. But this alarm seems very expedient at this time when the poverty level in the country is, no di is nose diving. Nigeria as a world poverty capital. Yeah. You can see the statistics about health isn't encouraging. Yeah. So the alarm is appropriate at yes, this time. I believe so. The alarm is really appropriate. Um, take, for example, the atypical, the Wuse Hospital district, uh, district of where I work. You know, it has been noted that the rate of chronic illnesses have more than three times, you know, exceeded the previous rate five years ago. Well, we're talking of primary health care. You're yeah. talking of secondary so, health care like, now. Like, seriously. Then um, also, we also noted that uh, even the, um, the increase in prevalence of HIV and AIDS, which seemed to have been de decreasing some five years ago, and now it's, it's on the rise again. We used to see a minimum of um, 100 cases, 100 to 150 as of five years ago. Right now, we have about 300 patients on each clinic visit. That is really alarming, and this will continue in the next few years. So it's apt. The, the, the alarm for this health indices we looked at is really um, needed at this point in time because, especially in Nigeria, we are used to running for cure. We're not used to the preventive lifestyle, and this is something that will really cut costs if we go more on preventive lifestyle. I take, for example, the primary health care we talked about. Now, um, if our primary health care centers are really doing their job, picking up these illnesses and educating individuals very early to really reduce the number of cases we have on the long run and also reduce the burden on health facilities and also in all these things we need to there's a need to talk about these things regularly so that um, we won't be a burden to the the developed the countries at the end of the day that's why that that allow. seems that yes. seems uh, uh, to be what we are becoming according yeah. to yes. what the world health organization yes. in its late in its latest uh, information yeah, and yeah. statistics look yeah. at what it says it said that in nine, in uh, 2019 yes. most disease outbreaks that require the highest level mm -hmm. of the who response occurred mm -hmm. in countries with protracted conflicts yeah. sure because you should that that is very instructive 
We have, for example, the North East. Yes, yes. We have the IDPs congested yeah. in one place yes. that will stimulate and bring about disease. But I just want to say that we must look at institutional responsibilities, government agencies that are responsible. That brings me to talk about the three healthcare systems, okay? The primary healthcare level, mm -hmm. the secondary healthcare level, and, and the, the tertiary healthcare level. Mm -hmm. And you know that health is in the concurrent list. It's mm -hmm. not exclusive. So if the federal government does its own, focusing more on treasuries and, and tertiary healthcare system, mm -hmm. the challenge is mostly at the state's level. States must take the responsibility of trying to improve the quality at the primary health care level. Yes, but I would want to say that, yes, we have started better late than never. Yeah. Have you heard of the basic provisional health care funds? This is fund that is supposed to address the primary health care level. The federal government is currently revitalizing 10,000 primary health care. The, prior, the federal government Wh is doing Which are that supposed to be owned, by, operated by, by the, the state states. government so and the, uh, the government local government. Exactly, yeah. must focus more. If we, you don't have to take malaria yeah. to a secondary okay. or tertiary yeah. health care level, if the primary health care level is very efficient. But, so the, but, I think but the primary health care, uh, uh, yes, the, cottage, the cottage hospitals, yes. too. There are no doctors. There are no doctors. No facilities. Yeah. But you see, if you ask uh, Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Eze KK to go to, you know, uh, one uh, remote in Kavra, she, uh, she, <laughs> she won't go there. She will learn to go there if there are incentives. <laughs> yes. Let us look at it critically. Mm -hmm. You see, we can't always be optimistic. Yeah. This is not right. This is not right. What best can we do? There is a deliberate attempt to look at that. How do you? make people come to the primary health care mm -hmm. level. There is a policy called the tax shifting policy where you train community health assistants to be able to deliver services at that primary health care level because we don't have enough human personnel to do that. So that will be able to at least cushion the effects. But we know I am more emphasizing on the states. The states should take their responsibility with the support of the federal government to be able to carry out and make primary health care level, uh, health care level very effective. Then we have less. Of course, secondary, there are issues. There are mm. issues that you have said with facilities, mm. facilities that are not. The politicians, the governors, should have priorities. And part of the priorities, we are told, is look at health and education. But you know health is wealth. So there is a need for that emphasis. And I think some governors are taking positive steps. If you look at some governors, I don't want to mention state, but let me give no, an example. Go ahead. By people who yeah. are doing go well. ahead and You do look that. at, for example, in Lagos State, yeah. there is a lot of free health care services. Yeah. Even in Kaduna State, there is something. I know in the Kaduna wife state, of the Kirby State uh, so the governor, state, she's, see, she's doing, doing wonders advocating. too, yeah, so with the this. health uh, And even the issue of poverty, the same Kirby State governor has decided to take up 25,000 almaris of the streets caring for their needs, let's begin to talk. And we are talking, and that's why we are here. When we talk, we believe people should do it. But let it be known categorically that government cannot do it alone. Yeah. Primary health care, secondary health care. WHO is there to give the technical support, and they try to give funds. They give us loans. Some of the loans could be better utilized if priorities are done. Yeah. They should support us more in area of infrastructural developments in area of supporting pharmaceutical companies because one of the issues is access to medicines. We have over 120 pharmaceutical local manufacturers because when you talk of local manufacturers, you are empowering the local pharmaceutical companies, leading to job and wealth creation. Mm. And we are able to have NAVDAC easily that regulated. That should be the job of WHO. Yes. That should be the uh, policy formulation when of, I talk uh, of individual uh, mm. countries' yes, governments. Why do you have donut partners? What mm. I'm saying, they bring in their funds, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Whether you like it or not, yeah. they bring in their funds. Where should they address their funds? To? They should let us look at where we need them. Mm. And that is why I'm mentioning such areas. If you want to give us funds, let us use it for where they are needed mm. to be able to help. Like I say, access to medicine. You cannot buy medicine if you are not pre-WHO qualified because that meets the international standards. Mm. All so right. if they can support that, I think it's good for us. Oh, okay, uh, Zainab, that's a very good uh, juncture, you know, to apply the brakes. Uh, we want to take some commercial messages. When we come, we'll be interrogating, looking at alternate medicine, or still interrogate the issue of uh, tertiary, uh, you know, healthcare 
uh, service. You're still watching the Arise interview. We've got more still to come. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Arise interview. And I still have on, uh, on set with me on my immediate left is Zainab Sharif. She's a pharmacist and director traditional complementary and alternative medicine uh, department in the Ministry of Health. And of course, uh, to the extreme left is Dr. Eze Okeke Chika Odinaka, Senior Medical Officer, Department of Internal Medicine at the Wuse District Hospital here in Nigeria's federal capital. I want you to expatiate on the alarming rate of uh, the tertiary treatment to carry out on HIV AIDS is like malaria that is supposed to be a primary mm -hmm. healthcare uh, problem is now, you know, assuming an alarming proportion to tell us more about these. Okay, at the tertiary level, um, there are still a lot of um, issues basically because there are some illnesses that shouldn't even be treated at that level. It should um, be managed at the primary health care level. Even HIV AIDS, you know, if all the um, systems are put right, the prevention, the education and prevention should end at the primary health care centers. And they can even give out med medication, antiretroviral medication, to them at that primary health care level so they don't have to overwhelm the tertiary centers. So that tertiary centers, you know, um, um, manage the resources they, are, they have right now for um, specialized cases or specialist yeah, cases, cases. And, you know, and all that chronic illnesses. So, the primary so health but what you have is a kind of migration health, from yes. the yeah. rural areas yes. with people living with HIV yes, and have, the rest. And we have a lot of this primary health care disease coming down even to the tertiary health care centers. You know, and basically most of these illnesses can even be prevented. Like I was saying, to prevent malaria just costs less than 2,000 naira if possible. But to treat it, you know, it costs a lot. And we can It costs a minimum of 25,000 naira yes, now yes, to, yes. Treat, to treat malaria yeah. in Nigeria. That's a special and, and, hospital you, you must know. go. And then the children, you know, some of them even die from, from, from malaria. They can have febrile convulsions and all that and die from malaria. They record so, such deaths. I um, mean, no, no, very no, alarming. Yeah, very alarming. Most of them don't even get to the hospital before it happens. So we have to, you know, get our priorities right and then put things in order. Tertiary centers are really overwhelmed with cases they shouldn't be overwhelmed with. You know, let us put our minds down to, you know, those cases that can really tax, tax our brains, you know, make us, you know, use the medicine that we have read, you know, and let the primary health care center be revitalized to take care of those cases seriously. And though we still do a lot in tertiary like, centers. Like one of the finest cases, you yeah. know, which Nigeria recorded a very... Uh, monumental feat mm -hmm. was the separation of the co-joint yeah, twins the at the National, the National Hospital, hospital yeah. you know, so which means Nigerian doctors really have the expertise. Yes. Sometimes the motivation, the equipment, incentives. Yes. the yes. incentives are not just yes, there. Are not just there. Are not just there at all. They so do, we all we do. have the best hands, the best. even internationally, mm. you know, there have been a lot of successes from our doctors trained abroad, as in going over abroad, so, and there's been a lot of brain drain. You know, we're losing a lot of doctors to the international community. I'm sure you're looking to go to, no, no, to no, emigrate, too. No, no, I love my country. Too. I love my country. <laughs> so, um, so the tertiary centers have good um, hands. The only thing we lack are the resources. Okay. At our center, we have only two dialysis, two, um, three functioning dialysis machines, maybe three to four. You know, that cannot even take the number of cases of end-stage renal disease that we have coming to us weekly, monthly. You know, there are a lot of concerns. Statistically, in, in a week, how many do you have? In, in, in cases? our wards right now, we have 60% of our cases in the ward of hmm. having end-stage renal disease and needing dialysis. 60%. So it's what, alarming. What, what could be some of the primary causes of this? The, 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 the WHO has talked about poverty yeah. and the rest, the, you know. Okay, the top three, hypertension, diabetes, and HIV and AIDS. So we still need to go back to the drawing board because these three diseases can also be preventable. Okay, le let me come to you now because uh, you carry a very special toga. You are a pharmacist. You are a, you are, you are a fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. You are a director in the, uh, in the Department of 
traditional complementary and alternate medicine. Have you used the traditional alternate medicine to fuse with modern medicine? There's always been that conflict, tussle, conflict yeah. and the rest. The world is going back to nature. Yeah. And they are reassessing the importance which WHO has recognized that it has accepted and endorsed the allopathic medicine system, which we don't argue, the conventional, the indigenous medicine, the traditional medicine of the people, part of their culture. They have grown in it, they have used it for so many years before the incoming of the modern medicine and the complementary and alternative medicine. Once your traditional medicine leaves your country and goes to another country, it becomes complementary and alternative yeah. medicine. Okay. Having said that, just if like bitter not, leaf yes. leaving Nigeria to Go, the U.S. and, and that, they now make, capsule and they make bitter leaf capsule Some, now, yeah. and Nigerians are buying. We're buying it. And Having said Nigeria. that, you recognize that if we improve and promote this health crisis appropriately in terms of quality, in terms of research, not the Baraga no. Hawking. When uh, we go in the, the right way, and the rest. that is why the department was created. Having recognized the importance. To promote our own. The Chinese have done it. They call it Chinese medicine. Yeah, they drink Most of the Nigerians the go yeah, out all there. The teas. They go there and mm. buy with heavy amount. And then the Indians are promoting Ayurveda, their own systems of medicine. You can imagine if they were so to import drugs. So what is Nigeria drugs. promoting with Nipreid? Nipreid uh, has professional... involved... We collaborate with Nipreid. Yeah, what, what are well. they promoting? They Tell have me done, some of the... Have uh, you heard of the drug, the anti-sickle cell drug? That started from Ife? No, never I, I started. That, that is the, the plant, but... Yeah, the, the plant, the, Oinata, become, you know, Oinata mm -mm, or something. That is, yeah. the, that is mm. different. The one of Nikosan, which is from some components, yeah. started in... Uh, Nipreid. By a traditional medicine For practitioner. those who don't know, Nipreid yes. is the Nigerian National Institute, Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and, and Development. Development. Yeah. So you can see that 40% of our orthodox drugs that we use today yeah. are from traditional medicine. Yeah. The In Chinese, Nigeria? No, all over the world. All over the world. Okay. Because if you look at some of the drugs, the anti malaria drug we talk about, mm -hmm. Chikona Bak. Where we got chloroquine, mm -hmm. and even the ACTs you Atimeter. go and pay money for yeah. the Atemita, the Distin, yeah. was it from an yeah. indigenous Chinese plant called yes. Atemisia anua? And we don't have any in Nigeria. We have more what, what, than so many. What has happened to our Dongo Yaro? We do that. Tell there us. is a research going on. Money has been given to Nipri to commence the research in Dongo Yaro. We know it can be because not just like you said, not much money is given to develop some basic priorities, so also in the case of research. Is there politics in uh, pharmaceuticals, no. uh, research development in medicine? In, all over the world there is political agenda. I tell you that. I always say it authoritatively that they will never want you to develop your own drug because of many, in quote, political reasons. To discover a drug, it may take you 10 to 15 years, and you may need to spend about $60 million dollars. How can we do that? But for us, come to Africa. There is a decade which the WHO has proposed called the Decade to Promote African Traditional Medicine. It started 2002 to 2010. Now revisited and reviewed because of not achieving the targets to 2020. Along this line, we are to set policies traditional medicine policies, we are to have regulation, to have traditional medicine council, and we are to develop our medicinal plants database. We have over 8,000 species of medicinal plants in Nigeria. We have not utilized even 10%, because that brings me to the issue of addressing poverty. If we are able to research on our plants, which we are doing, you know the Moringa all over they are using now. Mm. Moringa in the U.S. is brought into this country and sold at 6,000. We can be able to develop our own because India makes six billion dollars annually from the sale of three million tons of moringa. Do we have and uh, that Nigeria quantity? has the best species? Stimulate marketing requests, stimulates research, and when it stimulates research and stimulates needs, 
it leads to massive cultivation. I am telling you from the plants we have so far identified, we are going to start cultivating at community level because they have the land. And there is what we call intellectual property rights. In countries like Cameroon, our neighbor here, they produce a plant called Echinasi, which is well known as an immune booster. But you know, in a meeting like that, you see the traditional medicine and uh, traditional ruler in a meeting. Why are you here? I'm here to protect my intellectual property right. They are coming to get this plant from my country. They are now going to develop my community in terms of provisions of schools and basic healthcare needs. They build them roads. They build them schools because of that plant. They came to take the plant, and now they have gone further to come and set up a facility. We are all talking about poverty reduction, and, and that and goes into have, climate change. Yeah. We are doing that. that and we don't have I'm that here. plant in Nigeria. We have, no, we don't have Echinase, yes, mm -hmm. but we have much more better plants than that. Echinase. We have so many plants, and we are working on them. And there is a deliberate attempt now to support that research in the area of anti-malaria. We are working from the Ministry of Health angle. We, are, we have a committee to look into the local production of our anti-malaria, looking, looking at our local content plants. You said Dongo Yaro is already is ongoing. one of them. Even your bitter leaf has anti-malaria properties. Yeah, that's why there the so American many. pharmaceutical uh, has, company. Yes, yeah. neem tree is well known. We know so, that. Mm. And we have our local Artemisia annua, which mm. we call Artemisia aspen seed. We have them. But what we need is to put the priorities together, to believe in us as Nigerians, to support the research. Let us produce for our people. When they come, they tell you that if you produce this, you will kill your people. We will not die. We didn't die before they came. If we are able to get that support and produce for our 200 million people, we will not die. A case example, when I went to reach this traditional medicine, there was a plant. They said this plant contained three components. Sorry, a, a product containing three components. It is used in the management of heart disease. They have the tea form, they have the pill form, that is in pills and in capsule form. I asked the professor, which one has more therapeutic benefits? That means which one has more medicinal effects when you take them? You know what he said? Very no. quickly. Very He's, quickly. He Say. said, the best is the leaf, but for political agenda, an international submission. I so give the pills. All right. <laughs> Thanks very much, Zainab. Well, you're still watching the Arise interview. It's really getting uh, more interesting. When we return, we would look at Nigeria's budget, for example, in, uh, in the healthcare sector. We'll take a break. Stay with us.